Up top, a special panel of seven state lawmakers spending months considering potential impeachment of two public officials, both in Franklin County. County Sheriff John Grismore and County Prosecutor John Lavoie for unrelated matters. Lavoie was accused of maintaining a toxic work environment fueled by sexually explicit commentary. He denied some of it, refused calls to resign, and then abruptly did September 1st. This morning, we will ask the impeachment committee leader about both the Lavoie and Grismore matters and what comes next. Mr. Chairman, thanks for coming in. Welcome to NBC5. Thank you for uh, having me in. I had a couple of questions for you in light of recent events. You're the chair of the Special Committee on Impeachment Inquiry, also chair of the Judiciary Committee in the Vermont House. Uh, we've had a new development. Uh, the state's attorney in Franklin County, John Lavoie, resigned. He was the one of the two subjects of your inquiry, which has been underway all summer. And um, this concerns a, a, a widely publicized uh, report uh, from Paul Frank and Collins, a Burlington law firm that um, substantiated uh, a number of pretty troubling allegations against state's attorney Lavoie. You brought in more than 30 witnesses to try to find out uh, what was what. What was your conclusion? Well, our conclusion uh, was changed, uh, certainly, uh, because of the resignation of Mr. Lavoy. Uh, we hadn't reached a conclusion yet. Uh, I'm not sure what that conclusion would have ultimately been if we proceeded, but we had finished our uh, initial process of gathering evidence. Uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, 31 witnesses uh, testified. Uh, we heard from uh, pretty much everybody in the Franklin County State's Attorney's Office. Uh, we heard from court personnel. We heard from law enforcement. Uh, we heard from victims' advocates. You know, uh, we really took a broad look uh, at, at the Franklin County uh, State's Attorney's Office, and we also looked at uh, the allegations that were in the report. So we had finished that evidentiary gathering stage. Uh, the next stage was going to be uh, reviewing that evidence, uh, looking at the standards uh, with our legislative counsel as far as what constitutes or might constitute uh, impeachable behavior. Uh, but we never got to that point uh, of, of discussing it. So were you headed that way? We were headed towards the discussion. I mean, that, that was going to be the next discussion. So do you, what, the committee of seven did not have conversations about, oh, my God, can you believe what that witness told us or that corroborates what was in the Paul Frank and Collins report about Lavoie's conduct? Well, we certainly, we heard uh, individual witnesses talk about that conduct and explain that conduct. Uh, we heard witnesses who had heard about it, who had witnessed the conduct, et cetera. Uh, so, but, but going to the point of uh, actually really evaluating each witness, we hadn't gotten to that point yet. You know, the only uh, evaluation that really happened as we were going, everybody individually was thinking, all right, well, what are we learning here? Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was, well, who else might we need to speak with? Uh, it was a question that would frequently come up. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we ended up talking to the court, the law enforcement, et cetera, to see kind of the broader impacts of what was going on in the office uh, in the county. You, had you made up your mind about the validity of the allegations against Lavoie? Um, I may have made up my mind about uh, the validity of some of the allegations, uh, but I hadn't that isn't the same thing as deciding whether that was impeachable conduct and whether that would be a recommendation. You know, that was really the discussion that was uh, short, well, I wouldn't call it short-circuited, that we just didn't have to have right. uh, once he resigned because we have other work to do, as you know, with our other matter involving the Franklin County Sheriff. In the matter of, of State's Attorney Lavoie, a lawyer, a law enforcement official, uh, a career law enforcement official who was charged by his staff for all sorts of stuff, body shaming, uh, commenting on, on women's weight, breast size, other physical attributes, um, allegations about derogatory racial and ethnic taunts, about defense attorneys with physical disabilities. I mean, most Vermonters who I know who've read this report were stunned that this guy was still on the job. Mm -hmm. um, but the committee had not reached any conclusion after weeks of testimony? 
We didn't have a discussion. I'm sure individuals had reached conclusions, uh, but th you know there there are mitigating factors there uh, that we would have to look at. We we heard from lots of witnesses, including witnesses very supportive of of Mr. Lavoie, uh, who hadn't uh, observed those allegations. Uh, so it, it was not necessarily a, a done deal. I mean, yeah. I can tell you that. You know, I was pleased that the resignation happened, so we didn't have to have that difficult discussion. And I also can tell you that we let it be understood by uh, Mr. Lavoie's attorney uh, that if he were to resign, we would shut down the investigation. Uh, I think that was you know, what we did learn, and I can certainly explain, uh, is that uh, the office was not functioning as well as it could, that the best way forward uh, was for Mr. Lavoie to not be there. Uh, and, uh, and going through an impeachment process, which could take months, could cost a lot of money, could put witnesses through uh, you know, more stress. Uh, you know, it's, it was not easy testimony for a lot of these witnesses. Uh, we were pleased that you know, he stepped down, he did the right thing. Uh, I wish it was earlier, uh, but he did the right thing to step down so we wouldn't have to go through all that. Yeah. Uh, Lavoie admitted a, a lot of right. what had been alleged here, denied some of it, um, chalked it up to his crude sense of humor, said it was just the way he was. Uh, is that consistent with um, the modern workplace in 2023? No, no, it's absolutely not. You said you have another matter to uh, resolve, which is uh, the second Franklin County complaint against the sitting sheriff, the newly elected sheriff in Franklin County. Uh, and I'm wondering where you stand uh, with Sheriff Grismore. Sure. So uh, we're really in a, in a waiting stage right now, and I'll explain. Uh, there are a number of investigations and processes that are ongoing currently. Uh, there is the, uh, the criminal case, uh, I believe it's out of Grand Isle, involving simple assault, which was rel relative to the incident from uh, last fall. Uh, there's the Vermont Criminal Justice Council, uh, who is scheduled to meet on October 17th to determine whether uh, to decertify uh, the sheriff, Sheriff Grismore. Uh, there is a Vermont State Police investigation into what my understanding is financial issues uh, based on an audit uh, that was provided by our state auditor. Uh, so you know, those could influence uh, what the committee finds. But in the interim, uh, in, earlier this summer, we hired Downs, Rackland, Martin to do our own investigation, uh, really uh, fairly broad, but looking at financial uh, issues, looking at possible abuse of office, et cetera. Uh, not so much focusing on the use of force issue, which... Yeah, the, the kick that right. most Vermonters right. have seen by now. Right, but There's more to this then than that. Yeah, I mean, so just like we did with the state's attorney, we're going to have a very thorough investigation. We're going to look very closely at uh, you know, the various allegations, because it's not the only allegation. As I mentioned, there's these other um, investigations ongoing that involve not just uh, use of force. Uh, but when do you think you might have some resolution? So our Downs, Rackland, Martin investigator report is due on October 16th. Uh, whether that is met uh, depends somewhat on how quickly we're getting documents uh, from a subpoena that uh, we issued uh, to the sheriff's department, uh, the Franklin County Sheriff's Department, uh, for, for various documents. They have received documents, they are evaluating them, they have a forensic accountants that are looking at it, et cetera. So, so that's one thing, one part of it that's ongoing. The other part is, is with respect to use of force. Uh, and and as, you, as you may recall, in 2019, the legislature passed a law that set forth standards uh, for use of force. And after that, uh, the uh, uh, Vermont uh, Criminal Justice Council and the Department of Public Safety uh, issued policies. Uh, they did training statewide. Uh, and, it's, and getting use of force right is very important to the legislature and I think to the people of the state of Vermont, including Franklin County. So that, that's going to be another issue that we're going to look at. And that will probably start, I think we're going to be scheduled on the 20th of September to start getting some information, some uh, bring the committee up to speed as far as 
what a sheriff's office is supposed to do, some really basic educational issues because some of our committee members have not dealt directly with uh, sheriff's offices or with use of force policy. So we'll be doing some educational stuff to get us uh, prepared to, uh, to move once we see what the Vermont Criminal Justice Council uh, decides. None of us has been through one of these impeachment um, processes in the modern era. Um, How is it working? Is it working reasonably well? Are you satisfied with the pace of things? Um, that's a good question. I, I, I think we need a better way to have accountability uh, for, for some of these officials, for countywide officials. And I know that that's something the Senate is considering as far as a constitutional amendment that would allow more oversight, more accountability, uh, short of an impeachment process. How that sugars out, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I can tell you that this has been a fairly intense process, and, but I, I think it's important that, that we can show that uh, we're able to do this process effectively and relatively efficiently, to have some teeth in it, in other words. And I think we've already shown that with how, how serious we were on the state's attorney investigation and the same with the sheriff investigation. I wish there was a better way, though. I really do. Martin Lalonde, the uh, chair of the Special Committee on Impeachment Inquiry and House Judiciary Committee chair, representative from South Burlington. Many thanks for being with us. Thank you. Governor Scott has appointed an interim state's attorney in St. Albans. He is Bram Kronefeld. And at his news conference this week, the governor urged the impeachment panel to stay at it. Before the election, I had said uh, that I didn't think he should run, that he, that he I thought it was egregious enough uh, to prevent him from running. And, uh, but he moved forward with that. Uh, the people of Franklin County elected him. Um, and now the legislature has decided to, uh, to uh, formalize uh, an impeachment process. So I would suggest, you know, they're not asking me. Uh, this is something that they did on their own, uh, but they should follow through on this.